Hi, I'm Chen Liu. And I'm Sal. And this is Our Next Make. Last week, we attended the Coney Island Maker Fair in Brooklyn, New York, and spent three full days hanging out with hundreds of amazing makers. Just before the event, we built this custom road case that not only carries all of our stuff, but also serves as a backdrop to our booth. To get started, we had to figure out how to source all of these metal parts. We found a site called DIY Road Cases. They've got everything you'll need to build any case you can imagine. Then we started designing in SOLIDWORKS for Makers. At this point, we weren't aiming for a full design. We were just trying to figure out how big the case needed to be so we could order the right amount of pieces and buy the plywood. While we waited for the parts to arrive, we started working on the wooden box. Most of the strength of the case will come from the riveted aluminum framework. But as an added measure, we chose to add rabbits where the sides meet so we can also create a strong glue joint. We just set up at the table saw to make repeat cuts and nibble away to create the rabbits. To perfectly size the top and bottom pieces, we position them in the dry fit box and then mark their width using a utility knife. During the glue up, we'd first clamp the parts in place and then add a few brad nails to hold things together while the glue dried. Then we cut off the lid of the box by making four passes on the table saw. I did have to take my time and be extra careful with a piece this big, and as I always do when making the last cut in a box like this, I clamped a few spacers in place along the opposite side to make sure the pieces remain parallel throughout the cut. I'm getting ready to apply the aluminum trim to the case. Now at the corners, we have a couple choices. We could either miter them or just create a butt joint. Now, if you're short on material, this is a great way to go because ultimately this gets covered with this corner piece. But I always like to practice cutting miters, so I use my small miter saw to cut the aluminum. It cuts nicely with regular wood cutting blades. I did learn something though. This aluminum angle cut really easily, but this hybrid tongue and groove gave me a bit of trouble at first. When I cut the first miter, the piece folded in on itself and got jammed up in the saw. That's because the piece was unsupported. So I used a piece of scrap half inch ply as a filler each time I cut the pieces. We're going to attach the aluminum trim to the case using rivets. So first we have to pre-drill holes and then use a rivet gun. On the inside of the case, I'm gonna add a backer washer. This will support the rivet and prevent it from digging into the plywood. With all of the metal framework in place, we could start to add the ball corners. And this is when we ran into a snag. Before we applied finish to the case, I took the time to glue in these solid maple blocks so we'd have more material to screw and bolt into later. And I was smart enough to offset them from the sides to avoid the rivet holes in this trim. But what I didn't do was account for how far in the holes are on this corner piece. So the blocks interfere with where the rivets need to go, which means I have to take the blocks out. And because it's solid wood attached to plywood with glue, it's probably gonna be a mess. So I really do wish that I took the time to model this in SOLIDWORKS. That way I'd know exactly where the holes are and how to avoid this mistake. It's not always easy to suffer a setback like this, but I'm glad I can at least share it with you so that you don't make the same mistake. And if I'm honest, it didn't destroy the box nearly as much as I thought it would, so I was able to recover fairly well. When applying the ball corners, we found that the very tip of the mitered aluminum framework prevents them from fully seating, so we used a file to remove a bit of the material. Installing the rest of these accessories was pretty straightforward. In most cases, we could use the accessories backplate as a template to position and cut the opening. After drawing the shape, we drill a pilot hole and cut it out with a jigsaw. Then we pre-drill and install the rivets. We applied all of the other details in the same way, cutting openings as needed and riveting, screwing or bolting them on as necessary. We added this 15 amp inlet socket on one side so we could power the monitor, a laptop, and some LEDs. And these two hinge latch doors so we could pass wires between the devices. We cut off the shelf inch and a quarter dowels to length and added threaded inserts to either end to make the legs. They get attached to the case using these angled leg mounting plates. We bought the casters from our local home center and bolted them in place. But we do wish that we had used one of the edge or corner casters from DIY road cases. They look like they give us a much cleaner look. This was such a great project and we really learned a lot. We hope that you did as well while watching along. If a road case like this is on your project list, we hope you now feel confident to tackle it. 
This was so fun to design, and the fact that it's so customizable means that we probably will make another one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on our next make.